G'day everyone, my name is Britt Kaling. I'm an APA titled Sports and Exercise Physio. I'm Australian Olympic Team Physio, Commonwealth Games Team Physio, and I'm the Principal Physio at Gold Coast Physio and Sports Health. Uh, I'm also proudly a five-time finisher of Kokoda Challenge 96K, uh, having won my women's and mixed category on all the occasions and my fastest time being uh, 13 hours and 20 minutes. So I'm going to speak you through uh, this presentation to help you get across that Kokoda finish line because that's pretty much the goal for all of you, right? So, if we oops, go back here. Okay, so how much do you really, really want to get to the finish line of Kokoda Challenge? So the questions I'd get you to start thinking about before anything else is why do you want to start this event, right? It's pretty challenging, pretty tricky event. Why do you actually want to finish this event? What are you trying to prove or what are you trying to do? If you can answer these questions, this is going to be your motivation through the event when it starts to get tough. And trust me, at times you will go through some really tough, dark, painful periods. So how are we going to get you to that finish line? Um, in the pre-event period, we're going to be focusing on what you need to do to reduce your injury risk in training. So you've really only got, you know, a few weeks to go now. Um, this is still really critical to get you to start to the start line. Um, what do you need to do to reduce your risk of illness that's direct, going to derail you either getting to the start line or during the event? And then during the event, we're going to cover what to do during the event and other tips to get you to the finish line. So. In this pre-event period, how do you reduce your risk of injury? There's basically, as a physio, I'll talk about four big ticket items that you can control to reduce your risk of injury in this period. Number one, sleep. Sleep for recovery. Number two, nutrition. Number three, uh, knowing your training and your body. And four, using your uh, the right equipment. So sleep for recovery. Um, basically, your body's tissues need sleep to recover and repair. In all our elite sport, we talk about 8 to 10 hours per night in heavy training weeks. And obviously, this can be a little bit more cha challenging when you have to plan this around families and life. Um, one of the big things that's come out of some recent sleep research is it seems that you need consistency in the time you go to sleep and aiming for a consistent amount of sleep each night. So you want to get into good habits of trying to get yourself to sleep at the same time each night. Having one or two nights a week uh, out of this routine is okay, your body can catch up, but aiming that for that consistency in the time you go to sleep and the amount of sleep is going to be really, really important for you during this pre-event period. Number two, uh, nutrition. So your daily and weekly nutrition needs, that is the amount of kilojoules you put in, may change as your training increases or slightly decreases. So one of the big things we know, again, through uh, sports is that just three days of not getting enough kilojoules, so that's total kilojoules in your day, um, compared to the output that you have, so that's daily output needs as well as training needs, can increase your risk of a soft tissue injury. So that basically means that on the weeks where you are still doing some of your long training, your total weekly volume needs to increase and then you need to make sure on the days where you have bigger training on those particular days, so your weekend is your long training day you not only need to be eating pre-training during training and post training but that whole day you need to make sure you're meeting your nutrition needs um, if you're not sure about this i would encourage you to visit an accredited sports dietitian to help plan for your pre-training and your during event nutrition this is absolutely critical um, we have the wonderful uh, steph ford consulting out of both our clinics um, and she's an accredited sports dietitian. So an accredited sports dietitian, again, has a little bit more understanding. They've done extra study around um, the specific needs for you as an athlete getting through and to and through events. So make sure in this pre-event period you're really f focusing on your nutritional needs. 
Right, so number three, you're training in this pre-event period. You need to obviously train your body. That's your muscles, your bones, your soft tissues, and your brain to the event stresses. So most tissues, so when we're talking muscles, bones, soft tissues, will take 10 to 16 weeks to initially remodel and get stronger. So hopefully at this point pre-event, your training is well on the right track, and now it's about um, fine-tuning your tissues to get used to the course and the course demands where possible. So ideally what you all should be doing at this stage is familiarising yourself with the course terrain and the course profile and trying to train to this as best as possible. So obviously the 96K has about 4,500 metres of climbing, so you need to train up and down the hills. If you are uh, you know, somewhere away from the Gold Coast and you really are training somewhere where there's just lots of flats, then I'd even be encouraging you just to walk up and down multiple, multiple flights of stairs. It won't quite replicate, replicate a 45 or 60 minute trek uphill and then a you know, 20 or 30 minute downhill um, descent, but it's going to be better than nothing. So for all of you that are local to the Gold Coast, hopefully at this point you're getting yourself out on the hills that you're going to be um, training, that, sorry, that you're going to be actually participating in Kokoda Challenge on so that your tissues get, to you, get used to these specific up and downhill forces and the length and duration that you're going to be on them. I don't necessarily advocate that if you're going to be out there for 24 or 30 hours that you should be doing the 24 or 30 hour training session. But I um, definitely advocate that your tissue need, tissues need some amount of endurance in them. So this pre-event period to reduce your injury risk, you're going to have to make sure you try and keep your body tissues healthy. So these, the other things I would recommend is something like a regular massage with a therapist who actually understands the demands of the event, so ultra running or trekking. So that weight-bearing focus is really important. And then you should be in good habits of trying to do your own self-massage with foam rollers or trigger devices. Basically, you're looking for any areas of muscle, muscles that feel tight after training. Um, within your muscle tissues, we talk about, generally as a physio, we'll talk about a healthy level of tissue tone. So tone is kind of the tension in the muscle. So something that is too hard or too tense can be quite detrimental in your muscle system, and that's where your massage and your soft tissue um, and your own massage is going to come in handy to try and just reduce that tension. If you've got any particular areas of ache within muscle, feel free to do a little light massage on those yourself. In terms of any aches, pains or niggles that you're getting for training, um, obviously I'm a little bit biased as a sports physio because I see lots of problems that have come in and sometimes I see these problems present, you know, uh, four, six, eight weeks down the track. And if you're presenting to physio that long after you've had a little bit of niggle, um, it's usually way harder to keep you back on track in shorter time, shorter time periods. So if you, I'd encourage any of you, if you've got any aches, pains or niggles, just see a sports physio sooner rather than later. It's way easier for us to fix you earlier. Um, a good physio will also aim to keep you training and not just tell you to rest. So I always see it as my role on trying to keep your volume or load of training up as much as possible while trying to manage the little ache, pain or niggle that you've got. So pre-event period, obviously your equipment. So plan your event gear early. So luckily here on the Gold Coast, we have Wild Earth. You can pop into the shop down at Burley and you can ask all the experienced staff in there specific questions on your gear needs. The other thing I would encourage you is try and travel light on the day. Don't carry extra weight. So for every extra kilo you have on your back, obviously that's extra load on your whole muscles, joints, bones that you need to carry around the course. So don't carry anything extra than you actually absolutely need. Um, make sure in training, you're trying to train with the gear that you plan to use during the event. So when you try new things like poles, different socks, taping, different food, where it be gels or real food, do this in your in shorter training sessions to make sure that you can tolerate it and your stomach is okay. Don't try new things on race day. So do not buy new shoes or socks two weeks before and expect them to be okay on race day. You especially need to make sure all of these things have been trialled and they are ready to go well and truly before race day. So what uh, kind of injuries are you likely to 
think about getting on during the race. So um, what we're going to talk about is uh, firstly ankle sprains. So I'm a big advocate for taping your ankles on courses like Kokoda. There's some particularly technical downhill sections, whether you're walking or you're running, that will expose your ankles to very uneven, rocky and slippery surfaces. So if you're not used to taping your ankles, it's a good idea to put a couple of strips on to give you a little bit of extra stiffness and stability. What the taping will do is it will just enhance your body's proprioception. And proprioception is basically just your awareness of where you are in space. So um, on our website, our mygcphysio.com.au, if you go to our blog, you'll find some videos specifically on um, ankle ta the ankle taping that I use personally and that I use all my for all my athletes competing in these types of events. Um, the other thing I would say is uh, try some proprioception balance exercises. So it can be as simple as just doing some single leg balance with your eyes closed daily. So something like every time you brush your teeth, brush your teeth with uh, standing on one leg and potentially eyes closed. Um, if you're buttering your toast in the morning, stand on one leg buttering your toast. So all of those type of little activities, if you do them regularly, will assist your ankle stiffness and your um, awareness in space. So the other things we see uh, that are often a problem in this pre-event period are your Achilles, obviously at the back of your ankle um, where your calf attaches down towards the back of your heel bone and your patella um, at the front of your knee tendons. Now tendons attach muscle to bone usually, they act like the spring in your system and to prevent them getting sore and giving you problems during these really hilly events, you need really good calf and quad muscle strength to reduce the risk of them becoming a problem. So um, you're only a few weeks out now, but if you haven't been doing some calf and quad strength, hopefully you're training in course because that will give you a little bit. Um, and if you are having calf and quad problems, again, come see one of us as a sports physio ASAP to see if we can keep you on track. The other thing about um, obviously Achilles and any knee pains is trying to gradually introduce your heels. So if you're just going to listen to this presentation today and suddenly go out on track on the weekend and cover a whole lot of the hills on course, um, it's going to be a little bit of a risk for you developing a problem. So just introduce your hills up and down quite gradually into your training program. Okay, the other thing we see coming into this period is what's called ITB friction. So the ITB is the big band at the side of your leg that runs all the way down to your knee. Um, it's called your iliotibial band and at the bottom end there's a little sack of fluid, a bursa, that sits basically between that ITB band and your bony condyle at your knee. Um, that band can rub or friction across that bursa and it be can become inflamed and very acutely irritated in these type of events. So if you have little, um, a little hint of this happening and you're not at the event yet, then there's a couple of things we can do. And certainly if you've struggled with it in the past, we need to consider your running technique. So, um, you know, if it's probably a little bit late now, but certainly post-event, if this is something that you're struggling with, let's try and find you a coach that works on your running technique. Or I personally do a run technique clinic the first Saturday of each month down at um, Miami. Um, details are on our website, mygcphysio.com.au. Um, Otherwise, you can practice marching. Marching is a great way to improve your hip and knee mechanics, i.e. march up and down a corridor in your house, march for the first minute before you go out for your jog, um, and just practice marching around, and it takes the pressure off that friction at your knee. If you're having these problems with this on your downhills, I would encourage you during the event to start trying to march and do a little bit of a march downhill. Otherwise, you need to gradually introduce the downhills. And if it comes on acutely in these next couple of weeks period, then as I said, try marching or walking downhill sideways to stop it getting worse. The other thing we see a lot of in this prevent period is uh, plantar foot pain or pain underneath your foot. And this isn't always your plantar fascia, um, which is a little bit of a myth. To uh, prevent your plantar foot pain becoming a real problem on a course like this, you need lots of good calf strength. You also need to make sure your shoes and or your thotics are super sound and that you've trialled them and that you're used to them. 
And if you're still getting a few little problems or some tightness or a bit of aching starting on your foot, then there are ways that we can take this. Again, on our website, myjuicyphysio.com.au, our blog, you'll find a taping technique for plantar foot pain that you could try yourself or we can certainly show you how to do it. One of the other things you'll see in events where there's lots of ups and down heels is what we call patellofemoral pain, which is basically your kneecap to thigh pain at the front of your knee. Uh, to prevent this, you'll need really good quad strength. Um, again, you want to be training on hills or stairs gradually um, to be able to reduce the risk of this happening. And there's a few things we can try for this if it comes on acutely during the event. Okay, the other one we'll find that might be happening to you all now is low back pain. And to reduce this low back pain, you need really good trunk strength. So what I mean by that is your abs, your back muscles and your glutes. Hopefully some of you have already been doing a little bit of a gym program or a home program or some kind of um, physio exercise class um, to help give you some of this trunk strength. Sometimes it will happen pre-event if you've been doing lots of hills and you're really bent over at your hips you know, walking up the hill kind of at these kind of angles, making your back muscles work really hard. So again, um, to help this, one of the little tips is you could use poles or you could have one of your stronger friends if you have someone in the team that is, you know, super strong and doing it fairly easy is they can just give you a little push at the back of your pelvis going up the steeper hills and that'll just help you take a little bit of the load off your back. So what do you do in this pre-event period if you get injured? So if you do get injured in training, it doesn't always mean stopping all your training. So as I said before, a good sports physio should be able to guide you on uh, hopefully how to manage your injury and keep some training load in you in lead up to the event. Um, there's lots of options that we will consider training if you're unable to walk or run, things like the cross trainer, bike, water running, swimming. At our Burley Clinic, we have uh, this special treadmill called an Alter-G anti-gravity anti -gravity treadmill that allows you to still run but at lower percents of your body weight. So you can run as light as basically 40% of your body weight. So um, if you need something other than, you know, running or walking because it's been hurting you, then we can often, we can certainly look at this as an option for you. Okay, so pre-event period, special tips from me during this last block of training. Um, take your phone with you on all your sessions so you can call and get collected if something happens. At this point, so close to the event, don't push through any injury or pain. It's gonna likely make things worse. Hey, again, in this short uh, period that you have, get regular massage. You need to work out what that looks like for you around life and life stresses, but definitely worth keeping your tissues and the tissue tone under control. If you have any unusual tightness or niggle or pain at this stage, come and see us. All, us, uh, all our physios at Gold Coast Physio and Sports Health um, love this event. We've been supporting this event for a number of years now. So we will do our very best to get you to the start line and get you finished. And my other special tip would be um, trying to smile as much as possible while you're out there. There's certainly times you're going to go through uh, little black spots where you're not feeling great. And even just trying to put a smile on your face during that time is going to help you get, um, get through. We know from some of the research that smiling alone improves, improves running efficiency. That is, it uses less oxygen demand on the muscles. So um, where possible, get your teammates and encourage them to do a bit of smiling. So in this pre-event period, it's really important as well that we try and reduce your illness. Illness is potentially going to derail you getting to the start line. So what do you need to do for this? And in some respects, um, our COVID habits have hopefully helped. So, uh, you know, avoiding at-risk environments and sick people. So keeping your 1.5 metres, using hand hygiene, washing your hands for 20 seconds, using your hand sanitizers for 20 seconds, move away from anyone you hear coughing or sniffling. Um, keep yourself quite isolated from anyone that you know has been sick or ill. Um, we have good research evidence, again, that using a probiotic regularly can really help. Um, the um, good bacteria in your gut is really important for immunology, so um, getting onto this now can certainly still help you over this short period leading into the event. And then also, as I said before, recovery, thinking about recovery, that's sleeping, eating enough for your daily leads and generally not trying to pack in 
your weeks to be as busy as possible. Okay, so here's my tips during the event. So uh, when you're out there, how are we going to get to the finish, finish line? Uh, first thing I'll talk about is being careful with your pacing. So at the start, it's certainly easy to get excited and go faster than maybe you've trained for. Don't do it. Um, there'll be some faster teams out there having a bit of a dig to start with. Don't get excited. Have a think about what your training looks like, what your goal is for the event, um, and aim to follow that goal from the start of the event. Taping, again, hopefully you're trialling some taping uh, in training beforehand. You plan to use it during the event so you know how to get it right. Uh, any of us, again, as physios can help you with that, um, or you can try some of our videos on the website. I would always advocate taking some of this brown rigid strapping tape with you to use during the event if problems arise. Um, I'll always talk about this brown rigid tape being physio tape, and physio tape solves 99% of the world's problems. Well, perhaps that's a little bit of exaggeration, but I have uh, pants hemmed up with physio tape. Um, I've used physio tape during multiple events on my soft tissues to help me get me through. I've used physio tape to tape up bags and packs. I've used physio tape um, to help tow. Um, you'll be surprised what it can help you with. So have a little um, roll of this with you uh, out on your training and certainly during the event. Uh, have a good think about whether you're going to use poles or other equipment during the event. I think in, um, during these hills, if you can use poles and be used to them, they're certainly an assist to take a little bit of pressure off your lower legs. And the other tips during the event um, is your stronger team members should help the weaker team members. So we always use what's called a tow rope or pushing during the event. So obviously I've done a number of events um, with males around who are generally significantly stronger up the hills. A tow rope is just basically a little elastic cord that can come off the back of the person's pack in front of you. You can tie it around your little um, the, the um, chest strap of your pack and basically so when you're going uphill the person in front will help give you a little bit of a tow up the hill it doesn't mean you have to go faster it basically just means you get a little bit of a help or as I said before a little bit of a hand from the stronger team member in the back of your pelvis going up a hill can just help take the load off you and it will keep you together as a team if you're getting early injuries or pains during the event please communicate with these team members around you. So one of the worst things you can do is suffer on your own in pain, all right? You need to communicate with the team members. You can expect body aches and pains during an event like this, but if there's something that can help, then let your team members know and try it early. So anything like you're just getting a little bit of a rub in your shoes, stop, communicate with your team members, put a blister patch on it straight away. Um, if you're getting a little bit of a niggle, try some taping really early. Um, just don't whinge about it. Just communicate your team so you can all help each other. Um, the other thing I'd encourage you to do before you go in is speak to your GP about being able to take some Panadol with you and whether that's acceptable for you to be able to use during the event and then what kind of dose and how you're going to be able to use it. Okay, during the event. Um, oops, we've talked, talked about that. Oops. Um, so the other thing that you'll see on course is we will have physios out on course for you. So we'll be located at the raw challenge checkpoint about that halfway. So if you have any aches, pains and niggles or you need any taping done, uh, we will be there to help you. Um, just a little word, we are not miracle worker workers, but we do have lots of tips and tricks that might be able to help you get through that back end of the course. So feel free to come and find us. We'll be pretty obvious where we are out on course at the raw checkpoint. So other tips, my other tips for during the event to get you to that finish line, um, I would say having done this five times myself, it really is about mateship. So hopefully you've picked good mates at this point. Before the event, uh, sit down with your team and discuss um, the team expectations on time and pacing. If you haven't discussed this and it's not clarified, do it now. Um, discuss what you're going to do at checkpoint. How long you go in, what you're going to need there, are you going to be changing gear? You don't want one team member coming in, getting ready and being ready to go when the other team members all need to sit down, change socks and change shoes. I'd encourage you all to try and not spend too long at checkpoints. 
Um, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to get up and get going and you can really lose a lot of time sitting down, cruising around in checkpoints. I think you need to make sure you're going to enjoy it but not waste time sitting in checkpoints. Have a chat to your teammates about your water and food strategy so you can keep an eye on each other. Do you have a team member that is a bit prone to under-eating or not drinking enough? If so, you need to talk about that before the event um, and talk about some strategies about how, how you're going to help each other with that. And then talk about who is your slowest team member and how are you going to support them. So it's not just about leaving your slowest team member off the back, walking in their own 10 metres off the back of the rest of you the whole way. What it is about is getting all four of you to the finish line or more if uh, for some of you school teams. You need to be able to support the slowest team member and whether that means helping push them up the hill or getting things out of their pack when they need them or just talking to them, you need to work out what that looks like. And then you need to have a chat about what happens if someone gets really sick or really injured. What are you going to do as a team? Make sure if you can, you're training together and learning each other's strengths and weaknesses and that will sure help you in the day. Also, directly before the event, check your equipment directly before the event. All right? Make sure your bladder is not leaking. Uh, make sure your water bottles are not leaking. Make sure your light is working. Make sure you have your safety vest. Make sure your poles are working as well. If you're going to be using anything like um, um, chafe cream, anti-chafe cream, again, have it ready to go. My um, other tips, get into the correct headspace and have the right mental approach. Think of your why. So those questions that I asked you at the start, why are you starting this event? Why do you want to finish this event? Have that in your mind. It's not always going to sit there, but keep repeating that to yourself through the event. Focus on what I call the three Fs. So food, eat enough during the event, fluid, drink regularly and drink enough during the event, and foot care. So those three things will derail you from finish if you don't get them right. In terms of foot care, foot care, make sure you have suitable shoes for the terrain and suitable sizing. Don't forget over 96 k's, your feet will probably swell a little bit. You might need a pair of shoes that is upper size. Make sure you're wearing suitable socks that you've tried them. You're not getting blisters. If you have any areas prone to blister, again, physio tape fixes everything. You can use a little bit of taping around that area to start with to try and prevent those blisters or have some blister kit like blister band-aids with you in your pack to go. And then uh, chafe cream or lube, lube and more lube. So I lube all my toes, I lube all around my feet, I lube any areas of rubbing of my clothes because it can be pretty sore. And as I said, apply blister care early. So if you've got any area that feels like it's rubbing but it's not a blister yet, put a blister band-aid on early. And then what do you do when you finally get to that finish line? Hooray! So first thing is make sure you celebrate your sensational achievement. Finishing this 96 case is not easy, right? It's designed to be a hard and challenging course. You are going to get pushed, so make sure when you finish you celebrate that achievement. Eat lots of pizza to refuel and rehydrate. Don't do nutrition. So I said that. Actually, Steph would actually probably love that. Full of carbs, protein, uh, good nutrients. Uh, and certainly be proud of yourself and your mates. It's certainly an achievement that not everyone makes. And then I'd also encourage you to tell the world on your social media at the Kokoda Challenge. Super challenging course. Super proud of um, everyone that finishes out there. Um, so, you know, what Kokoda Challenge will say is, I hope everybody can wear a sense of pride on their sleeve. doesn't matter if you didn't finish. What matters is you dig in deep and gave it your all. So savour the challenge. If you need any help or any advice before then, um, please contact us <clears throat> at uh, mygcphysio.com.au. So you can send an email, info at mygcphysio.com.au. CC it to me, Britt, Britt Kaling, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, you can find me um, on social media, uh, we have our Gold Coast Physio and Sports Health web uh, Facebook page uh, where you can send us a message, leave a comment, and we'll get back to you. So thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great event out there, and I'll really look forward to um, seeing how everyone does on course. Cheers.